I think everyone should watch the video and make their own minds up. In public, he claims he wants to level up the North, but then he boasts about trying to funnel vital investment away from deprived areas. He says one thing and does another. I have to say, I'm surprised he's still defending non-DOM status. He pretends he's on the side of working people, but in private he says something very different. Over the summer, he was secretly recorded at a garden party in Tunbridge Wells, boasting to a group of Tory members that he personally moved money away from deprived areas to wealthy places instead. Rather than apologise or pretend that he meant something else, why doesn't he now do the right thing and undo the changes that he made to those funding formulas? Yeah! Well, uh, Mr Speaker, I know... I know... I, 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 know, the right, I know the right honourable gentleman rarely leaves North London. Yeah! But if he does, but if he, if he does, he will know that there are deprived areas in our rural communities, in our coastal communities, and across the south. And this government will relentlessly support them because we are a government that will deliver for people across the United Kingdom. But Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, he mentioned the last few weeks. I am the first to admit that mistakes were made, and that's the reason I am standing here. But that. But that is the difference between him and me. This summer, I was talking. I was being honest about the difficulties that we were facing. But when he ran for leader, when he ran for leader, he promised his party he would borrow billions and billions of pounds. I told the truth for the good of the country. He told his party what it wanted to hear. Leadership is not selling fairy tales. It is confronting challenges, and that is the leadership the British people will get from this government. Mr Speaker, I think everyone should watch the video and make their own minds up. In public, he claims he wants to level up the North. But then he boasts about trying to funnel vital investment away from deprived areas. He says one thing and does another. But they're shouting. They're not my words. They're not my words. They're the words of the former chair of the Tory party, sacked yesterday for telling the truth about the Prime Minister. Even his own side know he's not on the side of working people. That's why the only time he ran in a competitive election, he got trounced by the former Prime Minister, who herself got beaten by a lettuce. <laughs> so why doesn't he put it to the test, let working people have their say and call a general election? Well, it'll take a long time to get through this paper if we carry on like this, Prime Minister. M Mr Speaker, he talks about mandates, about votes, about elections. It's a bit rich coming from the person who tried to overturn the biggest democratic vote in our country's history. Our, our, ma 
mandate is based on the manifesto that we were elected on to remind him an election that we won and they lost. A mandate that says we want a stronger NHS, better schools, safer streets, control of our borders and levelling up. That is the mandate that I and this government will deliver for the British people.